guys, some of you guys met Stretch. I mean, Stretch has been a good friend of mine for a long time. And one of the things I liked about his sports, he does a couple of things that most people don't. One was he did parabolics a long time ago, way before they came out other boards. And his idea was to sort of like a like a dirt bike having a mono shock. It really helped keep the flex control. And then of course he got into doing the, the rail, I think he calls it a rail grab. The love handles. The love handles. Love, the love handles. <laughs> That's a cool thing because you take a piece of paper, it just flops. But if you fold it, it becomes almost rigid. Again, it's kind of like the ivy thing. So by having that curve shaped into the board, it made the center of the board not flex. And it gave the, the outsides of the board where we want it in the tail area. It encouraged it to flex there. So it was a really, Stretch is a real smart guy. I have a lot of respect for him, but that was a cool idea. We just want to take it one step further. And having it adjustable would be like, because the thing is, it's too flexible. I can make a board right now for it that flexes, and you'll be ah, oh, I love it. But then the other day I got out, and it was this, and was that. I felt like it was too much. So it'd be nice to be able to just think tinkler, you know, tighten it up. You know, like the guitar, you can fine tune it. Or one side could be different than the other as well. So if your heel side, it might have less flex because you got more power in your heel, and if your toe side, you'd be maybe a little more flex to kind of get the whole range of the turn. Thank you. Anybody else have any other questions? Any you can think of? Usually I get stuff like, how do you make a board go faster? How do you make it so it doesn't break? <laughs> okay, is that it? How can you make me ride faster? <laughs> That's originally Steve's question. Okay. That's a good question. What would you do if you were a shaper? How would you make a board faster? I love asking writers questions. I'm really good at asking questions. I don't, you know, all I know is that anytime I'm talking to you about boards, I sit down and tell you things that have nothing to do with the shape of the board, and then it just comes out better. So, <laughs> we sit and have, have conversations, and then I get a better board. So, I don't really know exactly <laughs> what you do. It just always works better. Well, I know <laughs> regarding that question, because I think a lot of people just like to go fast. Um, I was looking at some boards at the trade show. One of them um, that I really liked was the North. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but that made a lot of sense. Everything was aft, breakaway edges and stuff. And I'd actually like to do some racing boards that are just only for just flying, like out here when it's just cooking, you know. And you know, making boards faster, I think the main thing uh, is the curve, the bottom hull design. You know, you go straighter out the back. And or like toe boards, my jaws boards tend to start off pretty high <coughs> on the nose. Like the boards that were at Morris's house, do you remember? Um, Harold, Harold's mm -hmm. boards. And what I did is I pulled the tails out. I learned that from Dick Brewer, who's kind of one of my mentors. And I learned a lot about shaping from him. He kind of took me under his wing. So having that wider tail was like a much longer board, but just cut off. And that's not what you guys want. When you're riding waves, you want to be able to just slam on the brakes and do a big tail slide. I mean, that's what looks good, and that's what you see in the videos and stuff. But if you were just flying along and wanting to go Mach 1, that's one of the things you can do. And I think flex is going to help. I, I say I think because we really haven't done this yet. This is drawing board and you know, finding the right materials, making prototypes. Um, you, were, you were talking about a more flexible <clears throat> resin. Yeah. Well, what is, is, it, is, it, is it a resin or is it It's adenine? a urethane resin. It's a here and now. Um, the owner of the company was a, uh, a snowboard champion that was with Burton for years and years. And his dad basically formulates resins and stuff. He's on the East Coast. His name's Matt Campbell. And the name of the resin is called Resinex. And what's cool about it, everybody that we made these test boards just were blown away how soft. It was like they, they were on a magic carpet chop and stuff. This was in serpent. But I wanted to do some prototypes as kite boards because I think I think it was your question about the chop. It doesn't always have to be the shape that influences what you want. You know, it'd be nice to be able to take a 360 degree view of the thing and go, well, you know, the shape's on one side, but what if we have a, a material that's actually wow, this feels pretty good. Like one of my ideas was to take a snowboard and glue soft boogie board foam on it, and there's already a board my friend invented it actually, but, and then you shape this boogie board form into this, so the board's actually soft, but it's rigid. 
So for beginners, if you got hit by the thing, you wouldn't get annihilated. And at the same time, it'd be really easy on your body because when you land jumps and they're super light and they surf really well, they actually surf. They have flex in them and stuff. That's a whole different world. I know one of the things you meant, like, you mentioned a lot of the stuff's drawing board, like, just like with the shapes, like, you have to start somewhere, so, like, the shapes have been kind of refined and are constantly evolving. The, I mean, everything from insert placement to the layup to the different technology, and I think now, like, what Pat was saying, like, we're kind of getting to the point where at least have a general good idea of what the shape should be and what everybody seems to like, but it's taking the other stuff into consideration now, the different materials, the different kind of like, you know, the, the sixer that he mentioned and brought up with the six pin configuration, like kind of going a wider spectrum away from just your normal standard, you know, thruster setup, pintail classic surfboard shape. You know, now it's going to trying a lot of different things, some of which may work great, some of which may not work at all. And you know, we may have Snowboard's boogie board on. Well, I think keeping it all wide open and listening to your team riders and your customers is important. I want to make boards that last. I want to make boards that everybody can ride. But I think evolving and being one step ahead in some ways has really got a lot of merit. You know, I want to. I'd like to keep doing that. I'm into this for the fun of it. It's not so much the money anymore and stuff. It's about connecting with people. And you know, when you ask a question like that, I take that. And I'm like, oh, that's a good question. That's why I said that, because I figured that would be the first thing. How do you make your board go faster? You know? Maybe it'll be a finish that we put on. I, don't, I mean, I, I don't know that much about coatings and stuff. But I know a lot about just hall design. And I know that what's really great, like what I like, and I think Jason probably feels the same way, because they do it with their kite program, is Liquid Force just gives me total rain to do whatever I want. Obviously, we need to get a, a sellable product that everybody can ride. So.